and activist Audre Lorde said, caring for myself is not self-indulgence, it is self-preservation, and that is an act of political warfare. So, welcome revolutionaries, <laughs> good evening. <laughs> For many of us, we grew up believing that political activism meant a very specific thing. That it meant this, right? Or that it meant this. <laughs> or, in its most extreme cases, that it meant this. But what if I told you that political activism isn't actually a choice? That being political isn't a choice? What if I told you that political activism is this. Seek model Haroon Carr unapologetically rocking a beard. What if I told you it's Stella Young doing a TED talk on how she is not your inspiration porn? What if I told you that it was 50, 100 black men graduating from college? The truth is our bodies are political. The personal is political, whether we want it to be or not. So the really only question to be pondered is whether or not we will use our bodies to uphold systems of oppression or to defy them. The word body positive is quite a buzzword these days. Everybody's saying it, right? It's very cute. Normally, it, you know, it get, conjures notions of spa days and rocking your favorite pink bikini, defying the sin of cellulite. And while <laughs> body love is an amazing thing to aspire to, unto itself, it will not change the world. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but your hot pink bikini and your new uh, Italian Speedo are not disrupting any systems. <laughs> However, there are ways to use our bodies as everyday acts of resistance. I call this work radical self-love. Radical self-love moves us beyond the flimsy notions of self-esteem or self-confidence. It moves us beyond the notions of individualism. Radical self-love is not independent, it is interdependent. It is about our relationship, not only with our bodies, with the bodies of others. As we learn to make peace with our bodies and make peace with other people's bodies, we create an opening for creating a more just and equitable world. Every time you call truce with your body, you interrupt a system of violence and power that profits off of your self-hate. Every time you interrogate the beliefs and biases that you have about other bodies, you interrupt a system that profits off of the way that you feel about other bodies and the systems of comparison that we live in. Our relationship with our bodies is our access to a more just and equitable world. Our relationship with other people's bodies is how we bend the box towards justice. This slide is an amazing event that I wrote a poem about that I would like to share with you all. Bodies of Resistance. It is Monday afternoon and Roberta watches her sons spout laughter from their geyser throats. Sun-choked and filled with joy when she brings them to the beach. All six members of her family are here, a sanctuary slightly out of reach, a raft against the constant lash of waves. But today, the undertow will be too savage for her to save them. Today, the ocean is a tyrant appointed to swallow them all. Until 80 complete strangers build their version of a wall in the Gulf of Mexico, singularly summoned to ferry Roberta's drowning family back to shore. Humans who instinctively know every wall needs at least one door. Today, 80 Samaritans became bodies of resistance. Today, 80 people rebelled against an apathetic ocean's insistence on a sacrifice. And this is life, y'all. And these bodies, 
Breathless and beleaguered, we coax one another to survive. We are alive despite even our bones' descent. The slack-jawed mutter that says these bodies were not meant for delight. Who are we to smile as the world spins in entropy, a hula hoop at our feet? What right have we to meet this day with anything but fear? We are safe right now, but out there. Wells the tiny bloom of child we hush from the inside, and I know he is, she is, they are, we are afraid, convinced we must beware and hide. But what are we if not survival personified? Because at this very shake of second, a queer kid stands unapologetically lucent in the lion's den of a middle school cafeteria. Just as a woman steals herself and takes a seat in the precinct, preparing to report the rape, defiant against the red tape that would sooner indict the length of her skirt, only to acquit the menace of toxic masculinity, as a fabulously fat woman on a plane explains to the man who has spent the last 40 minutes shaming her body in a series of tweets that she has no intentions on vacating her seat of dignity to make room for his hate. At the exact second, a trans woman turns the doorknob on a woman's restroom as a politician attempts to legislate her into invisibility. A college student with cerebral palsy and 7,000 signatures petitions for accessibility in the office of a university dean. Some days, the invocation of simply being seen in the body we have today is the chant, is the march, is the picket sign. There is no time in all of history when we have not resisted, even as they attempted to gavel our silence. Nevertheless, we persisted, each of us, a link in the human chain. Your shame has not slain even the lowliest of beasts, but our collective transformation has toppled entire empires delivered us intrepid to capital city streets, three million grains of sand forged under the heat of oppression until we were fine as keen-edged glass, a butress of bodies unafraid to ask why black lives should not matter as we saw no they in we. New solidarity was a word that must spring forever like water beside a standing rock. The clock of justice will not tarry while you question whether you are worthy of the fight. Despite all you've been told, resistance is an everyday act. The work of excavating every tiny artifact of the oppressor that lives in you. Your call to be a balm to every self-inflicted wound is the way movements are birthed. In a land Glad to wish us endless slumber, waking unrepentant in our skin is a hero's journey. And the only way we collectively prevail, and only then can we say in the words of the famous poet Lucille Clifton, won't you celebrate with me that every day something has tried to kill us and has failed, and has failed, and will fail.